Hi, my name is Hannah Gill, and I'm a Crow researcher from the University of Arizona. Today, Kevin Sanchez and I are here to guide you through the process of manual de-identification and the tool developed by Dr. Adriana Peckerall. This is an important step in the process for de-identifying materials that will go into an online and offline corpus, if you are planning on sharing your data widely or using it for pedagogical purposes. The Crow team, with Dr. Adriana Peckerall at the lead, has created a tool to make de-identifying materials easier. Generally, manual de-identification occurs after automatic de-identification to make sure that the script caught all of the identifiable information such as names, emails, etc. If you are interested in running the automatic de-identification script, you can find that on GitHub in the previous step to this one. If you have run that script, in the document you are working with, the de-identified portions will have angled brackets with a word like name or place indicating what was de-identified. However, the automatic de-identification script cannot catch everything that needs to be de-identified, such as names of people, places, or any information that could trace the writing to a specific person. For this step, it is best to divide work among multiple team members if possible. Because this is a manual step that can take a fair amount of time, of course, depending on the size of your corpus. Next, Kevin will walk you through the process of using the manual de-identification tool. Hello everyone. Today I will demonstrate how to use Crow's manual de-identification tool developed by Dr. Adriana Picoral. In order to start using the tool, the files you want to work with must be in a text format. It's helpful if you have all your files within one folder in an easy to find location, and also have a separate folder where you can save your de-identified files into. So as you can see here on my screen, I have identified both where I'll be processing files from, as well as where I'll be saving those processed files to. You can begin by accessing the tool by going to bit.ly forward slash DID underscore tool. You start by clicking on the button, choose a file to select the file you want to open. Now that you have the file uploaded to the tool, you can notice the words with capital letters are highlighted. This is to help you identify proper names and other personal information that you may want to omit from your data. Now that you have the text open, if you click on any word of the text, highlighted or not, you can see on the right that you have the options to replace the selected word with the following tags. Name, place, course, or position. If you scroll down, you'll find a description of what the tags are intended to be used for. You can also delete any selected token by clicking on the button Delete Token. Any deleted tag will replace the information selected. If at any point you want to undo the last change you have done, you may click on revert to original. And then to save it, you click on the lower left hand side here and it will prompt you to choose your download destination. In my case, I'll be saving it to the, file I created, the folder I created earlier to save the identified files into. If your computer does not ask you to choose the download location, the file will be stored in your computer's download folder. If at any point you want to no longer work with the file you're working on and don't want to save the changes, all you have to click on is clear tool and the tool will refresh. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Please visit our website, writecrow.org to learn more about the corpus and repository of writing, including links to other writing research resources we've built. Thanks again.